This is Pastor Richard, and you are watching Anchored in Christ, a vlog from St. Paul's Lutheran Church to know what we believe and why we believe it to be Anchored in Christ's word for us. Now, this week we're looking at Luke chapter 11. It is a prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. It is, yes, that most famous of all those prayers, the Lord's Prayer, indeed the Lord's Prayer. Now, when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, many of you have studied the Lord's Prayer in confirmation, all those petitions laying out each section of the Lord's Prayer. Others of you, you pray that Lord's Prayer on a daily basis, and many of you will play, pray it every single week during a church service. And even Hollywood, you'll find Hollywood having the Lord's Prayer in their movies, uh, individuals praying it in the midst of something bad happening. But with that stated, let us consider for a moment in a very broad brush what we are praying against in that Lord's Prayer. Yes, what we're praying against. I'm reminded of several years ago, a parishioner named Vince, and Vince was going to be dying, and I remember being at the hospital with him on a Friday evening, and we knew later that evening that he wasn't going to make it through that night. And so I remember holding Vince's hand, praying with him, and we prayed the Lord's Prayer together, Vince and I. And then after the prayer, I looked up and I said, you know, Vince, when it comes to this Lord's Prayer, this is the last time that you and I will be praying this together. Uh, yes, indeed. You see, later that night, Vince passed away into the arms of Jesus. His soul went to paradise to be with Christ where he was freed. Yes, he was freed from this old Adam. He was freed from the attacks of the devil and he was freed from the ideologies of this world. You see, when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, we are praying exactly against those three foes, those three adversaries that we have in life. Obviously, we pray against the devil in the Lord's Prayer. We pray against the ideologies of the world, but we also are praying against ourselves. We're praying against ourselves, that old Adam, the sinful nature that wants what it wants, when it wants, whenever it wants it all the time. So if you think about it, when we are saying we want the Lord's name to be made great, uh, we pray a uh, hallowed and holy be your name, Lord God, because the fact of the matter is we want our name to be great. We also pray against the, uh, the will of our old sinful nature. We pray for God's will, not our will to be done. We pray uh, that our sins would be forgiven uh, because indeed we sin much with this old Adam. So as we think about this Lord's Prayer, we pray it with faith. Uh, obviously with faith. Only Christians who have faith can pray, but we're praying because we're simultaneously at the same time sinner and saint. We're praying against that old Adam, that sinful nature, and we will pray this Lord's Prayer all the way up until our death, and then once we die, we are freed from this old Adam. We're freed from the attacks of the flaming darts of the evil one. We're free from this ideologies of the world. We're freed into the arms of Jesus. So this Lord's Prayer, if we consider it as we teach it, as we ponder it, it is a prayer for us as Christians as we war and as we have a battle in this life under the sun, as we war against the devil, as we war against the ideologies of the world, as we war against ourselves, our sinful nature. So there you have it. Uh, when it comes to Vince, he no longer has to pray that Lord's Prayer because he's freed from the devil. He's freed from the world. He's also freed from his old Adam. But you and I right now, we are still alive in this veil of tears. So we will continually pray this Lord's Prayer as we fight this good fight against the devil, against the world, and against, yes, our sinful nature. I hope this helps, and we'll catch you next time.